Hi, welcome to Learning Monkey. I am Raghu here. In this class, we will discuss about digital signature services. So, what are the services that digital signature is going to be provided that we are going to discuss. In our last class, we already discussed some basics about digital signature. Please watch that class and come back here. The link for the playlist is provided in the description below. Coming to today's class, so using the digital signature, we can provide message authentication. So for each message, we are going to generate a signature. The verifying side is going to check the authentication, whether this is sent by the same person or not. So we have not yet discussed any of the algorithm, but the concept, how we are going to do, we are going to do using a public and private key that we discussed in our last class. So message authentication can be provided. Similarly, we can provide the message integration also, integrity also. So why, why we can provide message integrity? For each message, we are going to generate a signature that is unique signature. If you change the message, the signature also changes. This is what the concept of message integrity. So that's why in the latest digital signature algorithms, uh, latest we are using hash function type of algorithms so that uh, we can use it for uh, message integrity also. For signing and verifying, we are going with hash function logics. So by using that, we can provide this message integrity also. Now coming to the next one, non-repudiation. So what's that mean? Let's try to understand. Suppose A signed a message and sent it to B. After some time, A denied that, means A is telling lies that he did not send the message. Now, can B prove that the message is actually sent by A, it is signed by A and it is sent by A? No, he cannot prove that because we discussed that in our last class. For each message, we are going to generate a unique signature. After he, he sending the message and the signature, he changed his private key. Now B cannot prove it. Because the same private key, it is not mandatory to use the same private key all the time. He, A changed the private key. There is a possibility. So that's why non-repudiation cannot be provided, but there is one way to provide that non-repudiation, what's that way is by using a third party, trusted third party, we can do that concept of non-repudiation. How, how we can do that? Let's try to understand. See, in order to send in between A and B, there must be a third party. It may be a bank or it may be anything. The trusted third party should be there. A is going to use his private key and sign the algorithm and he is going to send the message and algorithm to the trusted third party. This trusted third party is going to use his A's public key and verify it and get the message. He is going to save the timestamp and the A's private key, uh, this A's message and the timestamp at what time he got that and to which party he is going to send. Means in the A's message he has to provide his A's ID and the B ID, he want to send this message to B. Now this trusted third party is going to use his private key and uh, sign the algorithm by he go with the signing algorithm and the message is sent to B. Now B is going to use this uh, third party's public key and uh, get the message and he can use the message. So whatever happened between A and B, the third party is going to store it. So that's why anyone can, there is no chance to do the repudiation. Cheating is not possible here. By using the third party, trusted third party, we can eliminate this, uh, we can provide non-repudiation. So these are the services provided by digital signature services. Hope you understand this concept. If you have any questions regarding the concept, uh, Please post your questions in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please subscribe to our channel and press bell icon for the latest updates. Thank you.